What is up? What is going on? And I hope you are having a fantastic day, fellow fans of Clash of Clans. It is your host, Galadon, and it is another epic day for Town Hall 14 attacks. Looking at some new faces that I've never seen before and asking myself, how? How? How the heck did I manage to three-star this base? And this is a sensation I've been feeling more often since Town Hall 14 has come around. And the answer, by the way, at the end of today's episode, it really does mostly come down to one thing. Although there is one other attack in here that, well, it went wrong for completely different reasons. We'll get to that in just a moment. Yes, you'll notice I still am using Queen Charge Hybrid and I am mostly YOLOing these attacks. And what I mean is we're just generally starting out by rushing the Queen in there. And you'll notice the Queen's healers died right away. I rushed the rest of this attack really quickly because I felt like the Archer Queen had no chance to get through even the Town Hall. So at this point, there's essentially no funnel on the left-hand side of the base. The Barb King, he's over there getting fried on the right-hand side. The Hog Rider's running in out of the Siege Barracks, and I just panic. I mean, a time and time again, I'm panicking. I have no idea what I'm doing, and I'm just kind of praying at this point that things are going to work out. I'm trying to guess how many hit points those miners have left and if they're actually going to make it through the next group of structures. Can't really see them very well, and yes, you'll notice that in these attacks, I have dropped a rage and picked up an additional heal. Now, what that does is it makes life for the Archer Queen much more difficult, but it does seem to help out in the back end of these attacks. And that's almost where everybody always needs help, right? Don't you need help in your back end? I, I think most people do. So yes, the heal spell is working out pretty well. And I can't believe I just said that in the video. Now I'm supposed to be talking about use code Galadon and you guys are still laughing that I made a back end joke. Or maybe you're distracted already down in the comments trying to write something clever to get a bunch of upvotes or get pinned by Galadon. Anyway, okay, those of you that are using code Galadon, you know who you are, and I thank you guys. Here it goes, the Unicorn rolling in with the Miners, and uh, I gotta say, I, I do love the Unicorn. I do really, really like the Unicorn a lot, and somehow, despite how sloppy that attack started out, it did end up being a three star. And again, I'll explain to you why in just a couple of minutes. Now this next one, I will say, I'm pretty proud of one particular hero and his ability. Watch the Grand Warden's ability in this attack. This is just, oh man, okay, it's exciting. Watch, okay, here we go. So the Archer Queen rolls in, General Yolo coming in, trying to grab the Town Hall if possible, and then waiting to see which way she goes and then determining how we complete the other side of the funnel. So the Archer Queen dealing with the bandits right now. She will eventually get through that one and move her way back in. There is the Tornado Trap, got triggered by the Yak. That is a kind of nice little bonus that happens from time to time. And then, yes, she's got to deal with a stinking Lava Hound. Uh, not happy about that, but we will be patient. The Archer Queen will come back and finish off the Town Hall after she finally gets through the Pups. Good Poison spell, and I've got to use the second Rage. So right about now, we're trying to decide where we want to finish that funnel. So we zoom out, we look around, we're going to go, uh, okay, fine. Let's start it over here on the left-hand side of the pet house. Barbarian King and the Siege Barracks go down as the Archer Queen deals with literally four Expos firing on her at once. So I start spamming freeze spells. I drop everybody else in because I really don't want to lose the Archer Queen. And this is where it comes. Watch as the Miners, the Hog Riders, the Royal Champion, and the Grand Warden move in. The Archer Queen is right there just about to die. Free spell on the triple defenses, and then the Grand Warden ability with the Archer Queen at less than 1% health. I know that because I'm a mathematician. Watch it right here. Grand Warden ability. Grand Warden ability keeps the Archer Queen alive, and then the healers are able to give her some health back. By the time the ability wears off, she's nearly back to full health, and the miners have gotten through all of those buildings in the core. The Archer Queen miraculously survives where she was definitely doomed. She was just about to get taken down by those Expos, but instead the Warden ability buys her the critical time that she needs to get healed, and now she's off to the right of the screen, wiping stuff out. Look at that MVP Queen down there is killing it as we roll through with that last heal. Notice the last heal spell. I, I'm really torn, you guys. I can't decide if I need another Rage or if I really am benefiting from that third heal. It's a tough call, but here you go, the Archer Queen. She's still alive. She's getting chased down by the Royal Champion and a bunch of skeletons. Up at the top of your screen, we've got the Barbarian King and the Unicorn stuck on a wall, and then everybody else around the outside. At this point, we kind of realize we've got this. Plenty of time. 
plenty of units and okay maybe this isn't so much a how the heck did i three star but i'll also admit to you guys that that was a completely random and just lucky shot that the warden's ability was just barely close enough to keep that archer queen alive and just it felt good right every now and then a blind squirrel finds a nut there you go we pick up another three star okay next attack and this one was one of the worst feelings in all of Clash of Clans. Okay, this has to be the worst feeling in Clash. And tell me if you haven't seen this happen to you before. All right, maybe not at Town Hall 14, but whatever Town Hall that you happen to be playing at, tell me if you've seen this. You've got somebody watching you, and that is not necessarily part of the whole equation here. But as you roll in, you're making pretty good progress, right? You're keeping your hero alive. You're dealing with a little bit of a funnel. You're trying to get through the beginnings of this raid. You're setting up for the remainder of the raid, freezing the single target Inferno and the Archer Queen. It's starting to look okay. The raid is more or less going the way you had hoped, and it feels like maybe you'll end up with a three star. It's still a little bit early. I start to think about how I'm going to do my Barbarian King and my Siege Barracks. So we're going to go far left-hand side with them, and it's right about here that pretty much the worst thing that can happen in Clash of Clans happens. We're just about to start the funnel on the left-hand side and watch the center of the screen as, you ready? Did you predict it? Do you know what I'm talking about? Not the freeze spell, not the town hall going down, that right there. Yeah, oh, uh, come on, oh, no. Now, I, I never know because I've got pretty crappy Wi-Fi around here if this is gonna come back right away or if it's gone. So I completely panic, I drop everything I can. This is not how I would normally attack. You'll notice that I've dropped almost every spell, every troop, every hero, everybody's rolling in the middle because I was hoping at least to grab a two star because at this point, I'm pretty sure I'm disconnected. Like I may be gone from the Wi-Fi completely. And if that happens, you may be familiar with it, but if it happens in the middle of an attack, whatever you've done the rest of the attack, as far as deploying troops, hitting abilities, spells, none of that counts. It's like you just left. And even though your device, you're actually clicking things, the game is no longer connected to the server and the server doesn't register your actions. So it is basically exactly the same as if you had turned off your iPad when that Wi-Fi signal came on. Now, somehow, some way, the Wi-Fi did actually reconnect and what happened throughout the rest of this attack ended up being what really happened. And I wasn't sure, like I said, I'm sitting here going, am I wasting my time right now? Is this just a joke, a cruel joke that the Clash Gods, or well, more so the Wi-Fi Gods have played on me and my battle log already reflects a 50% two star or worse, like a 40% one star because yeah. Okay, so all we can do is finish the attack Go out and take a look at the log. Yes, it was actually a real three-star attack. I couldn't believe it. It actually worked out. Okay, so last attack of the day. We're gonna look at another Legend League attack against another base that I really hate. These guys with their tricky, clever, I'm gonna throw in these weird gaps and you're never gonna know where your Archer Queen is going to go walls. And yes, I do hate that about this. I can't get my wall breakers to go where I want them to go. I drop the poison spell before the Lava Hound comes out of the freaking clan castle. That is not good for me either. And okay, I'll tell you at this point, as I battle with this Lava Hound, the key to how I won all of these attacks. And um, I'm just going to admit it to you guys. I'm not proud. Uh, it's because I gemmed everything to max. And these players are far from maxed out on defense way more than just the walls these scatter shots are not maxed out and of course the number one most critical upgrade that players are not doing that i've talked about before and i will continue to talk about until players get it done is the builder huts okay that is a huge upgrade people don't realize how many dps they are losing when they're not having the both offense and defensive capabilities of the builders and the builder huts so, you know, I'm just lucky right now. I realize just like the episode I made last week or so where I paid to win Clash of Clans, it is still like that right now. And my Legend League trophies reflect it because normally in a Legend League season, I get to about 5,600 or so, and I'm really struggling. This season, I had a defensive base designed by Itsu that I was able to borrow. Hopefully we can show that soon because it did defend pretty well right up until about 56. 5,700 and then people started to crush me even though I was fully maxed out. But yeah, so it's been fun. It was a good Legend League season, but no, I do not anticipate trying to push trophies in future seasons until 
And you know I've said this before many, many times. Until the Clash of Clans team finally gives Legend League players a reason to push. There is nothing, no use whatsoever for a Legend League trophy. And a Legend League badge doesn't even get you the same clout that it used to. Because lots of lower level town halls can get there. And of course, for the kids in Global, you can't go over there and flex it. And have all the kids in Global go, well, pretty badge. Yeah, that doesn't work either. So come on, Clash of Clans team. Give us something to work with here. Give me something, some sort of reward for Legend League trophies, and I will get back to pushing. In the meantime, we picked up another fortunate three-star, and you know what else makes me feel fortunate? The fact that you, the true hashtag Gallifam, stuck around all the way to the end of the episode, and that's why I love thinking about it. Appreciate every single one of you every single day. So get out there and make the best of the rest of your day. Be kind to other people. I'll see you back here again tomorrow for more full attacks. You know what makes me feel fortunate? The fact that this video is finally over.